we can all agree we need some big societal changes. And you may think those changes need to be in one direction, and your neighbor might think those changes need to be in a total opposite direction. <laughs> so how do we love our neighbor during such division? How do we put Jesus' second greatest commandment into action, and by doing so, fulfill his first commandment better? How do we make our words and actions match? Jesus said, you'll be hated. Yet Jesus didn't display or teach being hateful. How do we make such a distinction? Most importantly, how do we love our neighbor like we love ourselves when we don't even love ourselves enough to implement habits that will change our lives for the better? So these were some of the questions that I wondered while trying to piece myself back together. I got the, um, we'll say, opportunity to rebuild my inner self from the heart outward purposefully as an adult. I knew what kind of person I wanted to try my best to be, but how would I get there? practically speaking. What do big cultural and societal changes look like on a day-to-day, minute-by-minute, word-by-word, thought-by-thought basis? Welcome to the My Planks Podcast with me, Hey Ferris. Now, I don't claim to have all the answers. I definitely have a lot of questions. But I can tell you where and how I started the process when I was given the opportunity to rebuild myself between the ages of 25 and 35. I think the answer to community and loving our neighbors begins with examining the simplest pieces of our inner selves and how we affect others. So, like the Planks verse said in Matthew 7, let me read it for you from the NIV. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. This is Jesus speaking. So, the Bible's red letters. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. I knew the only changes I could truly control were changes to myself. So that's exactly where we begin. With confession and repentance. Because calling out the specks in our neighbor's eyes is exactly what we've all been doing. Instead of that fruitless endeavor, which clearly hasn't been working very well for any of us, I wanted to try out the whole plank thing. Instead of targeting others, I began by looking at myself and by comparing and contrasting that self 
to Jesus Christ. Sounds ridiculously lofty. Because it is. I'm not saying I got there. I'm not saying I'll ever get there. I'm saying if Jesus is the goal, then I need to define clearly where I want to be. Not just have some kind of abstract amorphous amoeba blob of a generalized goal. No, I'm talking about my life. We're talking about our lives here and who we want to be. If there's a legacy that we want to leave, what will that look like? And let's make some intentional steps in that direction. I'm talking specific steps, one by one, day by day, week by week. So, my planks by Hey Ferris, that's me, <laughs> is a podcast about rebuilding myself from the inside out. So, this go round. I wanted to update these planks, and I mainly wanted to study the scriptures for myself and then identify as many of my planks as I could possibly identify, knowing I cannot find them all. And this examining my planks practice would probably turn into a lifetime of self-analysis and intentional growth and personal betterment. At least that was the goal. These would be my planks from my study of scripture, from my experiences in the world. Because I am by nature a storyteller and by practice a story editor, I didn't have a full view of scripture until I read the entire Bible, yep, in one month, cover to cover, as God instructed me to do. So, in January 2023, I read the entire Bible in just 24 days. Reading this way allowed me to take in the overall themes, the cadence, the character arcs, appreciate the writers, find the puzzle pieces, and appreciate how everything works together beautifully, perfectly, for the good of those who love God. It allowed me to appreciate God's Holy Spirit as an author. Which, to my writing brain, was pretty nerdy cool. <laughs> so, the planks discussed on my podcast, My Planks, this season, won't be verse pulls only, or take any single verse out of context. No, I'm only able to view the Bible as I have experienced it myself. Therefore, when I test anything against the Word of God, I cannot undo having read the whole Bible. I will not intentionally remove one scripture and reference it in a way that misaligns the character and the story arcs and the themes of the greater work itself, now that I've got the greater work itself freshly in my brain. Analyzing the scriptures in this way, as if I were editing a manuscript for story arcs and themes, makes my interpretation of the scriptures uniquely me, uniquely Hey Ferris, just as these planks are uniquely mine. I am forever thankful that God Almighty himself trained me how to evaluate stories and then placed the ultimate book in my hand and head. So I've been praying about how to go about this podcast. I'll be publishing one episode per week for the foreseeable future. I've got at least 15. And let's see if we can't create new healthy habits for God. Like, say, creating a purposeful morning routine that works well for you. That may even mean starting the night before. The purpose of this is not to guilt or shame yourself when you forget or if you can't fit it in. 
the purpose is to make time for this at some point every day. So if you forget in the morning, it's okay. Revisit it at some point throughout the day and make small changes to fit into your next 24 hours. There's a purposeful action step at the end of each episode. So the time between episodes, we're focused on doing the action step, on remembering at the pivotal moment, oh yeah, I'm purposefully trying to act on this this week. If that means you listen to the same episode every day for a week, every morning before the day gets going, then do it. Create a purposeful morning routine that works well for you, whatever that looks like. I hope each episode may be useful to help set a daily intention for Jesus. Daily intentions create habits. Habits create behaviors. Behaviors reveal character. If our goal is to have the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16, maybe my planks will be relatable and will help you too. If being like Jesus is the goal, I've got a long way to go. But these action steps, followed by repentance minutes, where we discuss a little bit deeper, and then we vow to God to repent, and we ask for forgiveness, and we actually set achievable goals as to how we can change, not in the future, but now, today. Small changes we can make being repeated over and over. These small changes will become habits and these habits will change us. These habits become behaviors and behaviors reveal our character. I want to kick shame. I want to bring darkness into light when it comes to everyday behaviors we easily overlook. And I want to normalize repentance. I want to encourage you to get into the word yourself, to carve out your heart and to fill it back up with his word. So welcome and I hope you enjoy and I hope that made sense. I hope most importantly that my planks will help encourage change one person one moment one habit at a time we can change culture we can change society we can change eternity together but we got to start where jesus said to start and that's with repentance and our planks Please don't forget, I can only spot the planks in my own eye. Remember, Jesus loves you most. Have a wonderful week or day. Have a wonderful specified period of time. <laughs> Until next time. Bye.